Hey guys, so where I left you last, we were getting this error when trying to start the website. So I want to go ahead and fix that and I'll show you two different ways um, I know about to fix this type of error. So what's happening is when we compile the TypeScript, it's actually checking our node modules and basically making sure all the TypeScript compiles okay in there too, or the types. Um, and so what's happening is we have types for the website and we have types for the server. Um, and they're both sitting in node modules, so they're conflicting. So there's going to be some type that uses the observable um, in our server and also that uses it in our website, and they are two different things. Uh, they are two different TypeScript types, and so that's what's going on here, identical modifiers. I think that's what's the problem. So we can solve this in two different ways. The first way is to just avoid having TypeScript check our node modules. So you can say skip lib check to true. Let me go ahead and rerun this. And what that does is it does not check files that are um, like this. So dot d dot ts. So dot ts. So it doesn't check any declaration files that are of this format dot d dot ts. And that's all the files that are going to be in your node modules, the TypeScript ones, are going to be of this format. So it's just not going to check those. And so you don't have to worry about if there's conflicting stuff. And you can see it went ahead and built, and we see it here. Now, this might not be a great solution every time because you, you might want it to like verify that the types um, of the third party libraries that you're downloading actually work together and whatnot. So in that case, what you can do is you can specify exactly what types um, you expect or want to use. So here I can specify the types. And I can just get this from the package.json. So these are the four types that I expect to use. So I can copy them um, and just paste them in the types right here. Um, and so how this works is you don't need the at types in front. So you can remove those. And it's just basically an array of the names uh, like that. So now we have just node react react dom and those are the four different types that we we need for our TypeScript. Um, and so I'm going to restart this and now that works. So each time we add a third party dependency now, um, so this is the downside of this solution is you're going to have to go over here and you're going to add a type for it um, right here. So it's not awful but it's a trade off. Um, so those are the two ways I know how to solve it. I'm going to go ahead and stay with this way where we just specify the types and cool went ahead and built. So you should be able to be, be able to build as well and get just a hello react screen and welcome. All right, so I want to move on and continue setting up our website because that's what we're going to be doing first. Um, I want to just first just clean up and get rid of this, some of the stuff. So we don't need a logo. Um, we don't need a test. We don't need app or index.css. Get rid of both of those, and uh, that's fine. We can just delete the these things from the top, and we'll need to get rid of that. All right, and then in our index, we don't want to import index.css either. All right, so what I want to do next is go ahead and set up Apollo. So Apollo is what we're going to use to make GraphQL requests, and to set up Apollo, they have a getting starting page, but they use Apollo Boost for that. Now we could use Apollo Boost, but I think later on we're going to do subscriptions. And Apollo Boost does not support subscriptions right now, so what we need to do is install the libraries ourselves. So the best guide on that is under the basic migration under Apollo Boost migration. So head over there, I'll also link this in the description if you want to, because we're going to copy all these packages um, right here to install them. Now we don't need all of these. Um, so for example, uh, this is using, here's their little example. Um, they're checking for errors and whatnot. We don't have to worry about this at first, but the things we do need is the cache, the HTTP link, um, and the Apollo client, which is coming from Apollo client. So I'm going to say yarn add um, Apollo client, Apollo cache in memory, and Apollo link. Um, HTTP. We don't need error or Apollo link right now. The other thing we need is uh, React Apollo um, and yep these two right here. So GraphQL tag and GraphQL. Go ahead and run that um, and let those install. 
All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and set that up. I'm gonna create a new file called apollo.ts. And here's where we're just gonna configure Apollo. And we can just copy their example right here. And like I said, we don't need uh, on error or Apollo link. So we can just go ahead and delete that. And we can just directly, we don't need this Apollo link from, we can just directly uh, have HTTP link talk to the link. Um, Apollo cache and memory, oh, ordered imports. So I thought it was having trouble importing it. So this is a TSLint thing. Um, and this is basically just an annoying rule that I don't care about, right? So if we look at my TSLint right now, um, here is what I am uh, configured to, to do. And if we look at my server, I think I have this rule turned off, I do. So what I wanna do is just in the, the back over here in the root directory, uh, I guess just actually just copy the TSLint and paste it there. So we'll paste it. So now I have this TSLint in the root directory of my Yarn workspace. And what I wanna do is I wanna use this TSLint for all my projects and extend it. So now in my server TSLint over here, I can get rid of all this stuff and I can just extend dot 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 tslint.json and now it's good to go. So now my tslint over here, I want to get those rules and whatnot so I can do the same thing. Um, I don't think I have the linting options. Yeah, I, so that seems to be a different thing. So we can keep these and then um, we'll get rid of that. We still need the um, TSLint React, so we'll just go up, up, TSLint.json. Now, I'm not sure the best way to do this because we want, it's it's good to have a specific order. So TSLint rules and then TSLint config prettier rules, and these rules will override these rules. So that's, that's how you want it to be ordered. And right here we have React, and I'm not sure if I have React at the end like this, um, if this will kind of break prettier. We'll have to see and check. Um, but yeah, so that we'll do that. So now we shouldn't, yep, we shouldn't get that warning, cool. All right, so this is all we need to do about that. Um, for us, we're gonna say include for the credentials because we're running our um, server on a different um, port, different server altogether. Um, and then here we're gonna specify the URL for our server. So for me, it's on localhost. And I think, I actually don't even remember what port I used. If we go into source, start server, um, we can see, okay, so it's port 4000. So localhost port 4000 is where we're gonna make our GraphQL requests. Um, and then all we need to do is export this and then enter index I'm going to import oops import um, I think it's called Apollo provider from react Apollo so Apollo provider is going to inject the, cl the client or allow us to do GraphQL requests from all our components provider and then we just have to give it a client so we're going to pass it the client that we have um, and so I'm going to auto import this and another cool trick one of you guys suggested in the comments which I really liked so I told you I hit control and then space to do this you can also hit um, command dot and you'll get this little menu right here I like that this menu is uh, much nicer because it's not as cluttered and whatnot with extra things um, so either one works um, I'm gonna try to get used to doing this though because I like just importing it like that. But all right, we're good to go. So now our app has this provider around it. So now we can do GraphQL requests um, anywhere in our app because it's between this provider. Um, the next thing I wanna do is set up React Router. Um, so that's what we're gonna be using for routing. This is pretty easy. We just need to install React Router DOM. Now something I didn't mention before um, yarn add 
the library we just added before this, all the Apollo stuff, that was written in TypeScript. So it came with its own TypeScript types. Um, React Router DOM does not use TypeScript, um, and they don't supply the types themselves. So what you have to do is you have to install them yourself. So we're going to say um, yarn add. We're going to say at types React Router DOM. And so this is going to install the TypeScript types for us um, with, for using React Router DOM. Um, all right, so in my app, I'm going to go ahead and create a folder called routes. Um, and I'm just going to create an index.ts. And this is going to be basically my index route or where everything is going to be. So I'm going to say export, con export const routes. And here, we're going to have a browser router and we're just going to import all this stuff from react router dom so browser router route and then lastly we want um, what was it called the yes, switch so I'm going to say switch And then here, I'm going to render all my routes. So exact, and then I'm going to say path. It's going to be, we'll say slash register. And our component is going to be register. All right, so a few things about what's going on here. First off, I incorrectly named the file. So Something to take note about this, whenever you get errors like this where it looks weird um, and the coloring's off, uh, one, you could just have a bunch of syntax errors, but if you don't, um, take a look at your file. So I called mine .ts. You need to make sure to call this .tsx. That's where you do um, JSX stuff or React stuff um, in TypeScript. You have to name it that. All right, so I have no idea why it's... Uh, React refer oh I need to import React as well. So import star as React from React. Alright. Um, and it wants us to do this. So true. And we need to add our register component. Alright, so for those of you that don't know, I added a switch component. You might not have seen that before. So if I have multiple routes and I am not using the switch component, so register two for example. What could happen is you could actually render multiple routes. But when I use switch, what happens is it checks in the first route that it matches the path for, it renders that. So this way it just verifies you don't have multiple routes being rendered um, in, your, in your just application. Um, I'm gonna create a folder over here called modules. And modules is just gonna store basically our whole directory structure. Um, of components and whatnot. So I'm going to create a folder called register where we're going to put all our register stuff. Um, and then I'm going to create a file called register connector.tsx. And we're going to export const and we're just going to say hello. Hello. Uh, I will say this is the register page. Um, connector and in my index I am going to import the register connector and it doesn't like it oh because it's returning a string um, you should be able to do that in react now but it doesn't like it so we'll just do a div and now we need to make sure we import react Just do that. Oh wait, we, we can just render it as a string like this. There we go. All right, so now when we come to the register page, it should just say register page. And back over to our route, that should be all good to go. Now I'll explain more about what my why I'm doing my modules in this way and uh, why I call this register connector in the next video. I just want to go ahead and make sure this does work. Um, and if it does, then we successfully established Apollo um, and got that working.
um, welcome to React. Um, and we also set up React Router and our we should be able to go over to slash register and see stuff. Um, I don't know why we're seeing um, this this error again. Let's go over to our. We did add a new type, so let's try adding that. It looks like it's now having difficulty with Node. Um, that's a fun one to fix. So let's go to package, not package, TS config. So we want to add React Router DOM because we just added that new type um, right here or right here. Um, so if this if this type error persists, um, it requires a slightly different fix than what we've seen before. Besides, we could use um, skip lib check. Um, I'm curious what you guys think about the skip lib check. Um, let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna go ahead and add that for now, um, just to see, to get our code running and to see if this works. So I'm gonna say skip lib check true um, or if you guys have better suggestions on how to uh, I guess these type conflicts one thing that I've done before is there's a uh, something called no hoisting in yarn so uh, what that does is instead of having all your node modules at the top folder it uh, moves them down to the individual and that will fix it because you can add the types locally but we'll discuss that more later all right so I guess my app I forgot to actually render my routes routes and so we don't really even need our app anymore we could just kill app.js and so now I should be able to go to register and we see our register page perfect all right so everything is set up what we'll do in the next video is actually get started on our register. I'll explain why I called this register connector. And then we'll also get a fix for our um, TS config over here so we don't have to. Or maybe I'll just leave it on skip lib check. I'm not sure which one. We'll do one of the two. But I'll see you guys tomorrow.